Hello there and welcome back to my channel. We need to talk about Google Sheets, which is the Google equivalent of Microsoft Excel. So it's used to create spreadsheets, but I feel like it's very underutilized, especially in the teaching community. If you are interested, I do already have a full tutorial video on how to use Google Sheets to create a student checklist like this. So I will link that video for you down in the description box. But today I'm gonna to be sharing 10 of the best Google Sheets hacks for teachers. Now, obviously you can use Google Sheets to create formulas and functions and sort things. I wanna focus on some hacks kind of above and beyond that that you may not be familiar with, but they can really take your Google Sheets to the next level. I thought, how can I take it to the next level? Kicking it off with hack number one, dragging cell data. There's probably a much fancier way to say that, but that's what I'm calling it. Google Sheets is very intuitive and you can easily drag data from one cell to multiple cells and have it either copy the exact amount or adapt to the text. Let me explain what that means because that was super confusing. First of all, I can copy the exact same value from one cell to other cells if let's say I'm tracking weekly data and let's say most of my students aim for 30 minutes. I can go ahead and type 30 in this cell and if I select the cell, so it has that blue outline, in the bottom right corner there is this little blue square and if I put my mouse over it, it becomes a plus sign. Once I have that plus sign, I can click and drag in order to copy that exact same value across multiple cells. Now, I can still use copy and paste the exact same way. So for example, I can select this cell, copy, and then I can click and drag to select as many cells as I want, right click and paste and put the exact same value there, but sometimes just clicking and dragging is a little bit faster. But I mentioned that Google Sheets is intuitive, so it also notices patterns. For example, if I have my students listed with a count of consecutive numbers, I can just select, let's say the last three numbers, so eight, nine, 10. Once I have selected those, I have that blue little square. I can click and drag all the way down to the bottom of my list and it will continue counting consecutively. It also can notice patterns such as dates. So let's say I collect the minutes on the Monday of every week. I can put the first date in, so let's say 10, 3, 2022. One week later, so plus seven days would be 10, 10, 2022. Now that I've kind of established this pattern of one week later, I can click and drag to select both of these cells. Once again, I get that little blue square, and this time instead of dragging up and down, I'm gonna drag across. And once I let go, each of these will be exactly one week apart. Hack number two is freezing cells. If I have a spreadsheet like this with a lot of students, once I start scrolling down, I can no longer see those column titles, which is a problem. <laughs> so I can actually freeze those rows so that as I scroll, they will stay up at the top. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come up to view, select freeze, and then I can have it select no rows, one row, two rows, but ideally I really need these three rows. <laughs> I need one, two, and three all to freeze. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select this third row. I'm gonna come back up to view, come to freeze, and now this has updated to say up to row three. So I'm gonna select that. You will notice it puts this kind of thicker gray line just to show me that those are the rows being frozen. But now as I scroll down, those rows will actually stay so I can see exactly what those categories are. Hack number three is to use alternating colors. With a spreadsheet like this, as you start moving into different cells, it gets a little bit confusing as to which row it is. I know it does make it gray over here on the side, but it would be much easier if the entire row was gray just to kind of create that differentiation, especially if I plan on printing this at all. So in order to add my alternating colors, I'm gonna come up to format, and then choose alternating colors. And then I can play around with the range. So for example, I want this to apply, let's see, A3, so starting there all the way to Q3. 
Q. Well, I don't want it to go Q. I want it to go all the way across. So that will be AL and then all the way down to 38. Yes, that is accurate. Click OK. So it is now going to do from all the way across and I do have a header so I can leave that checked, but I want the header to stay white. And now I want color one. So this first row underneath to be kind of a medium gray. So I'm gonna select this one right here, light gray one. And then color two, I want just to be plain white. And it now has those alternating colors. I'm gonna click done. The great thing about this, rather than doing it by hand, obviously it's faster, but if I add more rows, so at the bottom, let's say I add four more rows, it's going to maintain that pattern of the alternating colors. You should know those colors are sacred. So personally, if I want those alternating colors, I always go through alternating colors versus trying to highlight the rows and do it by hand. Hack number four is to split data. So I can actually take one cell and split it into multiple cells. For example, currently all of the student names in column B have the first name and the last name in the same cell. Let's say I wanted to split it so that the first names were all in one column and the last names were all in one column. First, I wanna go ahead and add another column where I want those last names to go. So I'm gonna right click on column B. I'm gonna choose insert one column right. So now I have a blank column next to the names. I'm going to highlight all of the student names. So from B4 down to B38. So with B4 selected, I'm gonna scroll down, hold down shift on my keyboard and click B38. That's gonna select all of those cells in between. Now I'm gonna come up to data and select split text to columns. It could detect the split automatically and Google Sheets is pretty good at this, but you can also click in order to give it something specific to detect. So for example, space, that space is marking where I want it to split. And since there is a space between the first name and the last name, that will work perfectly. And once I select that, it has now moved all of the last names into the next column. Hack number five is to add a drop down list to a cell. So let's move to another spreadsheet as an example. Let's say I have this student data overview sheet where I'm gonna print it out and keep it in a student data binder. But as I'm creating these, in order to make it faster, I would love to have a drop down, for example, of services that this student might receive. So for example, SPED, speech, language, occupational therapy, and so on. So in order to create this drop down, we need to use something called Called data validation. So I'm going to show you how to do this using student names. On this next sheet, I actually already have a roster ready to go. And you might notice over on the side, I have those documents and services listed that you see in the drop down that I have here. So what I'm doing is pulling data from this other spreadsheet. So I'm going to select the student name cell. I'm going to come to data and I'm going to select data validation. Now it's gonna ask for the cell range. So personally, I'm just putting it in this one cell. So I don't need to select a range. I can have a list from a range, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do. So I'm gonna select this little grid button. I'm gonna come over to the other spreadsheet and I'm going to click and drag in order to select all of those student names from my list. Click okay. And I wanted to show drop down list in cell. And I could have it show a warning. I'm not really using this as a way to like only type in certain texts. That's what true validation is. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I'll just have it show the warning. That looks good. Click save. Now, if I come back to that blank student overview, I have a drop down. I can click and then I could select from that name list that I have created. But you also can do this by just typing in values. So for example, if I come here to subject, data, data validation, instead of having a list from a range, I can actually choose a list of items. And I'm just gonna separate them by a comma. So for example, math, science, social studies, reading, click save. And now that drop down list are those different subject areas that I have typed in. So if you are creating some sort of a data sheet or a checklist and you want to have different standards, you could type in all of your standards and then have it create a drop down list so you can easily just select the standard instead of retyping it every time. Hack number six is to autofill cells across sheets. 
Now, if you own my student checklist templates or my student data sheets templates, first of all, if you don't have them, I will link them for you down below, but you may notice that they are set up where you have a roster page and the student names you type on that roster page automatically fill on all the other sheets included. It's a great time saver. Time thief, time thief, fire him. I'm gonna show you how to create that. So if I have this student roster sheet right here, and let's say I have this clipboard cruising. So I'm gonna print this out and I'm gonna check off students for you know various data collection. I don't wanna to have to retype all my student names. Now I could copy and paste them for the roster sheet, or I can have it actually pull that data. So in order to set this up, I'm gonna select the first cell where I want the first name to appear, which would be B4. With it selected, it has that blue outline. I'm gonna type in an equal sign. From here, I'm gonna navigate to the sheet where I wanna pull the data from, which is this roster sheet. And I'm going to click the cell that I want it to select from, which would be right here, the first name, which is B5. So I'm just gonna double check. It's pulling from the roster sheet and it's pulling cell B5. That looks good. I'm gonna click enter. And now it is automatically filling that name. And if I replace that name, so for example, Michelle Emerson, of course I have all caps on, whatever. <laughs> and if I come back, you will notice it has automatically changed, which is why I prefer this to traditional copying and pasting. But I'm gonna undo that, go back to Michael Scott. Now, I want to take this formula and I want to apply it to all the other cells in this list. So with it selected, I'm gonna come to this blue square so I get the plus sign, click and drag, and it's going to automatically adapt to that formula. So it is now pulling from B6, B7, and so on. Hack number seven is to add conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is a way to highlight a cell a specific color based on parameters that you give it. Now, how I like to use this as a teacher is, for example, I can highlight missing data. It's a really easy way to see which students are missing an assignment or haven't taken an assessment yet. So just to show you what that would look like on my student data sheets, I have this little checkbox, now that's making it much fancier, but I can toggle it on or off. When I have it toggled on, it's going to highlight any pieces of missing data, but I can also use it to highlight scores that fall within a certain parameter, a certain color. So for example, if I wanna highlight data less than a score of 50, I can have it turn red. If I want data between a 50 and a 75, I can have it turn yellow, and then data greater than a 75 green, I can toggle those colors on. So in order to show you how to do that, I'm gonna come here to this assessment data spreadsheet just as an example. So the first thing we're gonna do is highlight missing data. So in order to do that, I want to first select all of the cells with the data that I want to possibly be colored. So all of the number cells, essentially. So that means I wanna highlight from C4 all the way to J38. With C4 selected, I'm holding down shift on my keyboard and selecting the last cell, so it selects all of them. I'm gonna come up here to format and choose conditional formatting. So you will notice the range is already what I want it to be. And I want it to highlight yellow if that cell is empty. So format cells, I'm gonna change this to is empty and I'm gonna change the color to yellow. So now I actually have them highlighted yellow. I can click done. If I wanna get rid of this, if I no longer want them to be yellow, I can just click the trash can. But I do have a set of student checklists and student data sheets where you have that toggle with the little check box. I'm not gonna show you how to do it in this video because it's a lot more intensive and it takes a lot of time and it's kind of hard to explain. But if you are interested in grabbing those already ready to go, they will be down in the description box. But just to show you this updates in real time. So if this score disappears, if I click delete, the cell automatically turns yellow. And if I type a score in, it will change back to that gray or that white depending on my alternating colors. Now in order to do the color coding based on where the score falls, once again, I'm going to select all of those cells that I want it to apply to, click add another rule. And this time, instead of formatting it for is empty or is not empty, I could choose less than, and I can type in the value. So for example, less than 50, and I can change the color to, let's do this kind of red color. There we go. 
And I would just repeat that for each of those different values. So if it's between 50 and 75 or greater than 75. Hack number eight is to add a filter. This is a great way to keep your data, but be able to look at only certain parts of it at a time. In order to add a filter, I'm gonna first click and drag, or I can use that keyboard shortcut, to select not only the data, but also the column headings for it as well. With all of those cells selected, I'm gonna come up to data, and I'm gonna choose create a filter. Now you will notice that these columns and these rows have turned green because that is the area the filter is applying to. And I also have this little drop down next to each of these column headings, which is why I put them with the headings versus not, because it automatically applies it to the first row. Now, these have bolded and got a little hard to read, so I can select these and maybe make them like size 10 or even size nine, just so it's easier to read. Okay, much better. From here, I can click that filter and I can have it filter by different parameters. So for example, I added those colors in, I could have it filter by color. So I could have it show me only the fill color with light red. That way I could look at only the students that received a score less than 50. So notice it is showing me only for this column. Now, maybe I wanna show the students that got red on all of the assessments. If I look here, the second column, they're all already red, but if I come to this third one, I'm gonna select that same filter, but choose light red. It got rid of that one that was the yellow, and same thing here, filter by color, fill color red, and it's just kind of filtering out until I'm left with only that one student that has gotten red on every single assignment. Now, in order to undo these, you just have to kind of come back in and undo each of the steps, but you can easily tell which columns have the filter because you get that kind of funnel look instead of the lines. Now, a few other ways that you could use this in addition to those fill colors, you can select it, you can have it sort the data, you can have it filter by condition. So maybe I want it to show me ones that were less than a 90. I can select that, click OK and it will filter those out based on those parameters. So this is a great way to be able to analyze data. I already showed you that data analysis sheet that is in my Google Sheets data sheet spreadsheet template thing that I have for sale, whatever. <laughs> and from here, those filters are already applied so you can use them within your data analysis very easily. Hack number nine is to add notes. So you're probably familiar with adding comments within Google, whether it's a Google Doc, Google Slides, or Google Sheets, where it will appear over on the side. But within Google Sheets, you can also add notes and they're a little bit more discreet than the comments. So for example, maybe I wanna put a note here for Angela. She got a 67 on this test. And I might look at that later on and be like, wow, why did she get a 67 when usually she's like in the 90s? Well, maybe she was sick on the day that she took that assessment. And I wanna make sure I have a note of that so I remember. Aw, uh, it's okay, Angela. So in order to add a note to a cell, I'm going to select the cell, right click, and choose insert note. And I can then type the message. So for example, Angela, was sick on the day of the assessment. And then once I click off of the note, you will notice I have this little black corner that tells me there is a note on that cell. And if I hover my mouse over it, that note will appear and I can resize it down here in the corner by clicking and dragging. If you are using Google Sheets with students in any way, you can also use it as a way to add directions for a particular assignment. And finally, last but not least, hack number 10 is to use keyboard shortcuts. Now, I've already shared a few of the shortcuts, especially using the shift key in order to select like a whole set of columns or a whole set of rows, but there are a ton of keyboard shortcuts within Google Sheets. First of all, if you wanna view the whole list, you can come up to help and then you can select keyboard shortcuts, but there also is a keyboard shortcut for the keyboard shortcuts. So if you are using a PC, you can hold down control and then the slash button, or if you're using a Mac, it's gonna be command and then the slash button. And when I say the slash, I mean the forward slash, the one that's by the shift button on your keyboard and it will pop up as well. Personally, one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts is if I wanna select 
certain rows or certain columns, but they're maybe not next to each other because when I use shift, it's gonna select all of them in between that area. Maybe I wanna select row five and then also row nine. If I select row five, so it's full dark gray, if I then hold down either control on a PC or command on a Mac and click the other row, it will select both of those rows and then any changes I make, such as the font, if I change this to Oswald, it will apply to only those rows that I have selected. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are so many more hacks for Google Sheets. These are just the ones I thought would be most relevant for teachers, but if there is another hack you know of that I didn't mention that you love as a teacher, please leave a comment comment down below. I would love to learn from you. Everyone else watching would love to learn from you. I have so much to learn from you. If you found this helpful and you did learn something new, please give the video a thumbs up. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.